this thing rocking and rolling. Thanks so much for tuning in, my wealthy, healthy, happy people. This is Wealthy, Healthy, Happy Show. I'm your host, ERGJ, Certified Financial Educator, and we're in the building. And so in case you don't know, we are going through the 15 Laws of Invaluable Growth. And what this show is all about is we dare you to grow. That's right. We dare you to grow. And so we're going through the 15 Laws of Invaluable Growth, and we are all, we're on law number four, which is the law of reflection. Now, let's do a quick recap. Law number one was the law of intentionality. What that basically says is that you need to be intentional about where you want to go in life. If you don't know where you want to go, you don't know where you're going, any road will lead you there. Because any road can lead you to nowhere, but we want to be intentional about where we're going, what we're doing. So be intentional about where you want to go. Law number two was the law of awareness. You want to be aware of who you are and who you are around and who you're watching and following, right? Um, that's very important. If you got some negative people in your life, you need to let the negativity go and don't let that be an anchor to your progress. You need people that's going to fuel you, going to support you, and going to help you to get to where you're trying to go. So once you know where you want to go, you want to surround yourself and be aware of your surroundings so that you can make sure that you have the proper people in your life. That's right, the proper people in your life. Law number three was the law of the mirror. The law of the mirror. What do you see when you look in the mirror? When you look in the mirror, you look and seek at yourself and you look into your soul, what do you see? Hopefully, you see greatness. Hopefully, you see phenomenal. Hopefully, you see supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Good morning, Nikhil. So what do you see when you look in the mirror? That's the law of the mirror. And today we're on law number four, the law of reflection. And we've been talking about the power of the pause, the power of the pause. And basically what we're saying is, guys, throughout your day, throughout the events that you take place, throughout your successes, even some of your failures or your learning experiences, you want to take a moment to reflect. You want to capture the moment. You want to take it all in when you are uh, going throughout your day. Uh, sometimes we get so busy with life that we don't take a moment to reflect. And so yesterday we talked about setting up, setting up a time and a place for you to reflect. Some people call this prayer. Others have meditation. Some do yoga. Whatever it is for you, um, you know, set up a time and a place. I, I had a daily walk that I would do um, as I would go through, uh, you know, my days at work. I would take my lunch break and take a walk, get away from everything, reflect on the beginning of my day. And then I would walk again before I left home for go to work to get to get up to the end of my day. What are you doing to make sure that you're intentional about reflecting so that you can capture the moments, you can learn from them, and you can respond accordingly? That's right. Did you, did you take a moment to reflect and look at that to-do list? Did you get the stuff done that you need to get done? Take him a moment to reflect. So we're on the law of reflection. So uh, we, we uh, started yesterday talking about the power to pause. And we're going to kind of complete that today because we have one last section. So we uh, so the, the things where you want to pause with intention, it expands and enriches your thinking. You want everyone needs to have a time and a place to pause. We just talked about that. And reflection turns experience into insight. And so today's uh, topic or uh, the next one was number four was when you take time to pause, use your eyes, eyes. And we're going to go through four different eyes that you want to use when you take your time to pause. Number one is you want to use investigation. You want to investigate. You want to investigate. Um, all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them, and that takes investigation. So you want to investigate during this time that you are taking your time to reflect. You want to investigate. You want to search. You want to seek. You want to find. You want to investigate during this time. The thing to remember is that continual growth comes from experiences. is only possible when we discover insights and truths within them. So are you looking for the truth? Now, here's the deal. For many of us, when we do our reflection or when we think about uh, what's going on throughout our day, we, not, we aren't necessarily looking for the truth. We're looking for things to affirm our belief. I repeat that again. Many times we're not looking for the truth. We're looking for things that will affirm our belief. So if we believe that we've been wronged, right? Maybe somebody slighted us. Maybe somebody said something out the out the wazoo and it, it it really bothered us we'll sit there and we'll look for things that affirm how we feel oh i was slighted oh and then you find someone and you think about something like yeah you were slighted and you'll find something else and they'll say yeah you were slighted but we want to look for we want to investigate the truth maybe that comment it didn't really it wasn't really a slight maybe it was just you took it that way because of how you were feeling at the moment and that person may not even meant to slight you in that way. They were just talking normal, but today was the day that you were just super sensitive and you took it personally. 
many times we take things personally when the person that's presenting or it has it it has it coming off is not even directing it at you directly but you're taking some indirect comment and you take it personally as if that person is talking to you so during our moments of reflection we can ask ourselves those questions like did that what did they intend to do right sometimes that's the most important thing to ask what what was the intention behind the message because many times a lot of people don't intend to hurt people and, and, and make them upset and, and make them feel some type of way. But a lot of times we're apologizing for how we made someone else feel when the reality is that person was going to feel that way anyway. <laughs> so, so take a moment to reflect so you can find the truth. So you can, you know, so you can really find the truth. And I don't know what I'm talking about that. Project. That's just an example. But you want to investigate. You want to find the truth. You want to get some insights into your experiences that you're having throughout your day. Because if you take a moment to do that, guys, you're going to find some wonderful, beautiful things. You're going to start to see, man, that the grass is green today. You're going to see that the sun is shining bright today. You're going to see that all that there's good things that are happening in your life if you'll just recognize them. You'll just take a moment to recognize the good that is going on in your life. Now, the second eye after investigation, after investigation is incubation. Incubation. And this is what he says. Incubation is taking the experience of life and putting it into the slow cooker of your mind to simmer for a while. Sometimes you just got to you just got to meditate on that thing. Right. Sometimes you just got to meditate on it. Maybe there's something new that happened. Yeah. Sometimes you got to sleep on it. Sometimes you just got to let it simmer. Sometimes you got to let that moment, that emotion, uh, that part of your day, uh, that 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 conversation with your boss, that 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 that, you know, that unruly child. Sometimes you just got to. Let it sit for a minute. And I know that for me, when I do that, when maybe I have an altercation or, or maybe there's, you know, maybe you feel you ever had a, had a conversation with someone, you feel the intensity without anything being said. And you're like, man, where is this energy coming from? Man, many times I just like let it sit. I let it sit 24 hours and I come back and I had a conversation uh, because a, a lot of times you have it right then and there. It's not it's going to be nothing accomplished but a heated conversation. But if you let it sit for 24 hours, you come back co- co- Calmer heads typically do prevail. And you can say, hey, you know, I felt some other type of way yesterday. I'm not quite sure what was going on, but here I just want to make sure that we're good. Did you have anything that you'd like to share? Did I did I do something? Did I screw up and didn't know it? Whatever the case may be, I always take that position. Did I screw up? Because it you know makes people feel a, a real good. Like, hey, you know, you're going to take ownership to anything that you did that you don't even know that you did. But at any rate, sometimes you just got to let it sit and come back to it. That's that incubate, meditate on it. Maybe there's a, a new task that you've been given. Maybe there's um, it's something new and, and maybe it makes you a little uncomfortable. You're not ready to just branch out and do it. Sometimes you just got to meditate on it, sit on it. Okay, what's the best way to approach this? Okay, what's the best way to do this? What's going to be the most efficient use of my time? Sometimes you just got to meditate on it. You don't have to act right away all of the time. And, and quite frankly, if someone is pushing you to act right away when you're not ready to act, that that could be a problem, you know, because we all act in our own uh, at our own time. There's a time and a season for everybody. And just because it's time for someone else doesn't mean it is time for you. So if, take a moment to think about it. this. This is especially helpful when it comes to your buying decisions. When you are uh, looking at maybe buying a new car or getting some new purse or whatever it is that's going to cause you to come out of your wallet and you probably buying something you know you can't afford. This is a great time to use the incubation, to meditate on it. Man, do I really need to spend this money? I need to spend this $200 on this person. And, and, and oh, we got we got the light bill coming soon. And we got the gas bill coming at the top of the month. But this purse show looks good. <laughs> so sometimes like you got to meditate on that thing, man. Listen to your inner voice and, and, and really listen to it. Uh, many times we ignore it. We're like, no, you know, that's just, you know, but, but. I found more often than not that that little voice that's telling me to do something or to not to do something is 99% of the time is right. And I just might just say, ah, let me go ahead and try it. Right. And they're saying, hey, you can do it. You're going to do your free will anyway. But many times we just need to listen to that inner voice. Uh, Mr. Beatles in the building. All right. So we talked about um, investigation, incubation. And uh, okay, he says, I give ideas as long as they need until I discover an insight or experience. The next I, which is 
illumination. The next I, which is illumination. So this is the part where you're actually bringing, obviously you're bringing light to your experience. You're bringing light to your idea. It's like that proverbial time when the light bulb goes off and it turns on. He said, he find experience, I find that I experience moments of illumination only after I spend time investigating an idea then allowing it to incubate for a period of time. Let me give you an idea. Uh, let me give you an example. So I'm working on this project right now. Um, and it's a million dollar idea type of project. I know Mr. Beatles is working on a project as well uh, just recently. He's probably working, he's working on a million dollar idea project as well. And so I'm, I'm to this place in this project where I want to move forward, but it hasn't been illuminated yet. Like I'm sitting on it, I'm thinking about it. What's the best way to, to put this thing together and, and, and present it? But it hasn't been illuminated yet. So I haven't I haven't really done anything else with it because I'm still meditating on it until it comes to me. Because everything that I do, and I'm just I'm just sharing a little part of my life with you. Everything that I do uh, as, as it relates to the things that I try to present or create, I want it to be dynamic. I don't want it to just be something that I did. I want it to be dynamic. And so I'm waiting on the dynamic idea to come to me on how to illuminate this idea that I have as it relates to the presentation I'm about to give. So until it gets illuminated, until it's like, ah, yes, until that light bulb go off, I'm going to keep meditating on it. I'm going to keep it in incubation. And it may take a little bit longer to get out. But guess what? When it come out, it's going to be dynamic. And I'd rather, I'd rather take the time to let it be dynamic than to just put something together and put it out knowing that I didn't give it my dynamic effort. So uh, so that's where I'm at right now in this project. So I'm waiting on it to illuminate. Now, the first like three sections is like a five section module. The first three sections, they were just popping off just like that. Illumination after illumination. I'm like, yes, let's, let's get this thing done. Boom, 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 boom. But this part right here, for some reason, is taking a little bit longer. I thought I'd be done already. I was projecting to be done by yesterday, Tuesday, but it hasn't been illuminated yet. And guess what? That's okay. I'll wait because I know that the idea is coming. I know that the light bulb is about to go off. As long as I keep it on my, I keep it in focus. I keep it on the radar. So at the end of each day, this is a quote by Jim Rohn. At the end of each day, you should play back the tapes of your performance. The results should either applaud you or prod you. Let me repeat that again. At the end of each day, you should play back the tape of the tapes of your performance for the day. The results should either applaud you or prod you. So you're either going to be like, man, this was a fantastic, awesome day. I got this and this and this done. It was, man, man, we was on, we was on 15 today. Or you're going to be like, hey, we need to make sure we put in a little bit more effort tomorrow, man. We, we didn't really, you know, we, we took the day off today. It was a little lazy. Um, things didn't go quite as, as, as we planned it, um, you know, and we didn't work our plan today. We're going to make sure that this, this fuels us to make sure we have a better day tomorrow. This fuels us to make sure that we have a better day tomorrow. Because we don't want to have another day like today. Like for me, guys, I know when I have a bad day. When I when I don't have such a great day, uh, 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 when I say a great day for me, a great day for me is me creating. A great day for me is me doing what I said that I was going to do. And whenever I don't have those days, whenever I decide that, oh, today I'm not going to do what I said that I was going to do and I know I need to do it, I start getting headaches. And I'd be like, man, where did this headache come from? And I know exactly where it came from. The headache is showing me that, hey, you didn't want to do what you said you was going to do? Well, you're going to suffer today. And I'd be, I'd be causing myself to suffer because I don't do sometimes. I, even me, yes, yes, even me, ERGJ. There are times when I don't do what I said that I was going to do, and my body responds and gives me a headache. That's where my head, I know it. And I know it's for, some of you guys are out there, you know when you get sick, you know why you got sick. And you saying to yourself, what the heck did I do that for? That's exactly what happens when I get headaches. Now, for some of us, you know, we might eat something bad and we have a stomach ache the next day or that night. And we, we, we think back, we're like, yeah, I know exactly where this came from. And so I've been, I've been studying myself. I know when I get sick, where it comes from, where it started from, what, what caused it. I got a pretty good idea <laughs> of where it came from. So if I sit around the house all day and I'm bored and I'm I'm just doing nothing like and when I say doing nothing like just watching TV just just playing a game just just all day doing nothing I get a headache or or my head start to hurt my eyes start to feel funny and and that's my body telling me that this ain't what you're supposed to be doing brother you can do it if you want but you're gonna suffer from it that's just me I don't know about you but my body will not let me just do nothing all day it just it just I can't I just it just it just doesn't work for me. So I don't do it anymore because I don't want my body to, you know, I don't want it to get that pain. 
You know, that pain where you start, you start be like, you start praying to God, God, please take this away. I won't do it again. <laughs> so if we want to incubate and we want to let that thing illuminate, illuminate. Then after we get the illumination, guys, after we get the illumination, we want to illustrate. We want to let our imagination go wild on the illustration of this thing. What would it be? Uh, what would a speech be without good illustrations, a flat outline? What would a good book be without fleshed out ideas, good stories, and insightful quotes? And so as you think about whatever it is that you are looking to do, as you're reflecting on things, you want to start to illustrate these ideas that you have. You want to, you want to give them some, some meat. You want to give them some life than just being a you know, a, a piece of paper, right? But then you give it some life and you add stuff to it. You let it, you, you, you illustrate it in your mind before you actually illustrate it or bring it to life out here in the earth. Out here in the earth. All right, so those are, uh, you know, you want, those are the four eyes that you want to, uh, that we want to uh, think about as we're looking to grow, as we're looking to reflect. And during our moments of the pause, when we're reflecting, we want to investigate, we want to incubate, we want to illuminate, and then we want to illustrate. And I'm telling you, if you follow these, these, these four little eye principles during your moments of reflection, you're going to start to see that some of your great ideas, you're going to start to see that some of these great moments that you've taken the time to pause, man, they're going to, they're going to 10x your life. They're going to take what you're doing to a whole nother level because now you're coming back from your time of reflection, pumped up and feeling great and inspired because of your very own time to yourself. Man, how many how many of you guys how many guys have taken these moments and and you you get pumped up, you get inspired by your own thoughts? How many of you guys get inspired by your own thoughts? Like like you get this thing and it's like so freaking awesome. You're like, how where did that thought come from? And it inspires you. You're like, oh, I got to go and work on this thing. I got to do something with this thing. You get inspired by your very own thoughts. It doesn't take anything on the outside. It doesn't take any motivation. It doesn't take a, a motivational speaker to speak to you. You just get a great idea or you have a moment to yourself and it inspires you to go out and 10X your life. How many of you guys have had that experience? I know I have. And I feel like I'm talking to myself right now. Nobody, you know what? Somebody jump in the seat because I got to, you know, me, me talking to the black screen ain't going to work. I got to have some interaction today. You do a little victory dance and then you execute. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yes, thank you so much for Pat, Pat, Pat. Pat's in the building. Woo! Jeez. What up, Pat? What up? The lower thirds. How are you, sir? Pretty good. So, All right, man. So we've been talking about, uh, what are we talking about? Investigate, incubate, illuminate, and illustrate. Live, love, and la live, laugh, and love. That's right. He, all, he, got, he got the mugs, man. He got like a million mugs over there getting his coffee. So what are your thoughts, man, on what we've been talking about this morning? Well, and I think part of that is the time we prep for this meeting every morning. Is it gives us time to think. And, 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 you know, some of us have to get up a little earlier to make sure we make the meeting in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it wasn't a habit before, but we're developing new habits as we as we sit and pause and think and getting our day started right. And as you get your day started right, your day goes right. As you get your day started right, your day goes right. Absolutely. So guys, I know we got some people in all different parts of the country. So in case you don't know, we're here every Monday through Friday at this same time. It's seven o'clock for us here. I don't know what time it is for you, uh, but it's seven o'clock here on the East Coast of the United States. I know we have people from India. We got people all over the place. Hey, Sarah. Adlan, how are you? Thanks so much for joining the Wealthy, Healthy, Happy Show. I hope that you are wealthy, you're healthy, you're happy today. Hey, Brittany Moore, thanks so much for joining. You're here all the time. Britt, you got this. Self-motivated, intelligent. I hope that you are wealthy, you're healthy, you're happy today. Raz Rising, I know you're back in the building, brother. Thanks so much for joining us here today. I hope today you are wealthy, you're healthy, and you're happy. This six o'clock, six o'clock is time for Raquel to rock, the social media expert. Thank you so much for joining. You are here today. I hope the day that you are wealthy, you're healthy, you're happy. Mr. Beatles, as always, Mr. Kind Sir, he's in the building. Mr. Beatles, thanks so much for joining, sir. The, the, the Mr. Wealthy, Healthy, Happy himself. I can't get that connection, get that light going, but he'll probably be back tomorrow. Hope today that you are wealthy, you're healthy, you're happy. Miss, Miss, 
Miss Nikhil, I know that you are probably driving to work right now and you're in the building paying attention to what's going on. So thanks so much for joining. I hope today that you're wealthy, you're healthy, and you're happy. As we're talking about the law of reflection, we're talking about the power to pause. Sometimes you got to take a moment to pause. Sometimes you got to take a moment to reflect. Sometimes you got to just gather it and capture it all in. All right, guys. So those are some things we're talking about. We're going to move on into the questions. Um, uh, that the good questions are the heart of reflection. So these are some good questions sometimes that you might want to ask yourself um, as you're going through this moment of reflection. It says, uh, and here's the quote from Tony Robbins: "says Successful people ask better questions, and as a result, they get better answers." Let me repeat that again. Successful people ask better questions, and as a result, they get better answers. Now, I found this to be true. Um, there are sometimes that we just don't ask the right questions, and here's the deal: whatever question that you ask. Typically, you're going to get an answer to that question. So if you're not asking good questions, great questions as it relates to your situation, as it relates to where it is that you're trying to go in life, as it relates to whoever your mentor may be, whatever the case may be, you want to start to develop good questioning skills. And this takes curiosity. See, it, it, we, we tend to have lost a little bit of our curiosity as we've grown and developed because of however we've been programmed. We were very curious when we were younger. We'd ask why all the time. Why, 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 why? But hopefully we've developed our questioning skills to ask better questions, not just why, but what, how, when, where, all those good things, right? So we got to start to develop a better sense of asking better questions so we can get the real answers that we're searching for. If you ask a question and you get an answer, if you ask a question, be ready for the answer, but start to develop the, uh, what, start to think about the questions that you ask. Because when you start to ask the right questions, you begin to get the right answers for whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, uh, so if someone asks, what do I mean by law? Well, there is a book called The 15 Laws of Invaluable Growth. Um, and this is a section in the book called The Law of Reflection. So law typically means something that you want to follow. Of course, it is a book that's written by someone. So it's not necessarily something that's set in stone. Uh, but we found Mr. John Maxwell to be a good coach for many of us. So we're we're going to we're not necessarily going to abide by his laws, but we're going to draw from them and add some things into our life that might help. So we're talking about reflecting today. We're talking about the power to pause. We're talking about capturing those moments. And we're also talking about growing from those moments that you take a moment to, to pause or and or reflect and or meditate throughout your day. Um, how many of you guys have some have some busy days? How many of you guys have some hectic moments throughout your throughout your day or throughout your life. And so it's those moments that we can take those five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to reflect that we can be, then begin to capture whatever's going on throughout the day. And then we can spring forward. Um, so Kush, I think you want to just want to kind of listen in so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. Cause you know, we, I don't know, I'm gonna keep moving forward. Cause you're gonna get me distracted. So here's the deal. Um, the personal awareness question. So the first question is, what is my biggest asset? What is my biggest asset? So these are these are questions that uh, that can challenge you in your thoughts. And if you can answer them um, and now when we say your biggest asset, we're not talking about, you know, your, your physical appearance. Right. Hopefully, hopefully you got bigger assets than just your physical appearance. What's your biggest asset? So in the comments below, if you bold enough, answer this question. What is your biggest asset? What is your biggest asset? Now, John Maxwell, he wrote that he believes his biggest asset has always been his attitude. He said he's always been, it's always been his attitude. So what has answering this question done for him? He said it's not only encouraged him to continue to cultivate a positive attitude, but it's also reminded him that one of his best things that he can do for others is speak positively, positivity, positively into their lives and let them know that he believes in them and he encourages them in their journey. So in the comments below, Write down what is your biggest asset. Now, Mr. Beetle said critical thinking, and then Kush followed that up and said critical thinking as well. So tell us, Mr. Beatles, when you say critical thinking, what does that mean? Why do you say that? Kush, when you say critical thinking, what does that mean? Why do you say that? Anybody else here bold enough to talk about their biggest asset? And of course, you don't have to write it. You can jump into a seat and talk to us about it. What is your biggest asset? Uh, Patrick, I don't know if you got anything for that. I don't know if you have a biggest asset that you'd like to uh, like to speak on. Well, I'd like to stick to the question thing for a second. And, and I think that's a tremendous asset. Um, and what most people don't realize is the one who's asking the questions 
is the one normally in control. When you get uh, pulled over by a police officer, he's the one asking the questions. He's the one trying to take control. You can't let your circumstance be your control. You have to become the control. And the way you become the control is taking the pause and asking the questions and taking back control of the situation. Don't let the situation run you. You run the situation. So, Mr. Beatles, I'm, I'm writing that down. Don't let the <laughs> positive outlook. And I think Mr. Beatles said creative thinking. And yeah. the other, other gentleman said um, a critical, critical thinking. thinking. Oh, okay. And uh, this lower third, that's for Mr. Beatles. That's for Mr. Beatles. That's right. So, Miss Miss Raquel, are you joining a seat? And you're gonna to talk to us about this positive outlook, your greatest asset, your biggest asset. You know, we need you. We need you. Hey, uh, Miss Sarah, what is your greatest asset? What is your great Brittany? Brittany, Brit, 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 you got this. What's your greatest? What's your biggest asset? I see you said perseverance, Mr. Raz Rising. If you want to join in the seat, if you got the time to tell us about a little bit about this perseverance, that'd be great. Miss Nikhail, I know that you're driving. What's your biggest, what's your greatest asset? I think my greatest asset, man, I, I believe my greatest asset is my determination. Um, I absolutely will not stop. Each and every day, I will not stop. It is going if it is to be, it's up to me. It is going to happen. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how many days I gotta keep doing what I'm doing, but I am determined and it is going to happen. Everything that I say is going to happen is going to happen. And I'm taking as many people as with me as possible. I believe my greatest asset is my determination, my resolve, my belief that is possible. And because I believe that, I keep going at it each and every day. Uh, uh, go ahead, Pat. I'm sorry. Um, I read a book uh, a while back. It called the Four Hour Work Week. Yeah. And, somebody who missed somebody missing that, but go ahead, Pat. And uh, in that book, he basically said what most Americans don't fully understand is they have a tremendous asset in they have a educated mind compared to the rest of the world we have a very educated mind and sadly we don't use it and it, i mean if you think about the potential and the opportunity in this country compared to all the the issues in this country that are, are that we allow ourselves to get into you know uh where we have generations living in poverty in the richest world the richest opportunity land in the world it's just, you know, and, and we paint ourselves in the corner so much and we were not using what we have. And in this country, you have the opportunity. You know, we can literally decide that we're going to build one type of business or another. And we don't have to jump through all the um, the permissions that are required in other countries that well, no, only this family is allowed to do that company or that type of business. Uh, we can literally jump oh. in the marketplace and compete against anybody. Do you know, the, uh, they're asking if you know the author to that book. Um, um, You'll find it right quick. On my head, yeah. You'll find it. Uh, 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 Farrell, last name starts with F, but I don't, I can't. It, We'll find it. We'll find it. I'll find it right now. <laughs> um, it's a really neat book. Um, and he basically travels the world um, and he uh, outsources most of his business and sells it in the U.S., but has it functioned or uh, has it uh, completed by people in the Philippines or India um, and lives on the spread and travels the world living on the spread. Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss. All right, man, fantastic. So we got these assets. And I think it's I think this is a great question, right? And and the reason why I think it's a great question, because I don't think many of us think about it often. We don't take the time to reflect and, re and recognize our greatest asset. 
And, we, and we've talked about before, we talked about our strengths. We talked about strengths and weaknesses, right? And, and, and understanding what our strengths are so we can bring that to the world because that's ultimately what will shine to the world while we work on our weaknesses or we hire in our weaknesses. So, so just taking a moment to reflect, man, and, you know, what's our biggest asset? And the reason it's, it's a good question because sometimes we get assets mixed up. A lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of the world thinks that you got to have a nice body to have an asset. <laughs> but we don't focus on the mind. We don't focus on the attitude. We don't focus. Some people's biggest asset is their smile. Some, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that is they 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 have a contagion. You just see them smile. You're like, wow. Because because guess what? Most of the world doesn't smile. So they just have a, a phenomenal smile. That they walk in the room smiling. Everybody want to give them money. <laughs> Bruce Raquel, what's going on? It's six o'clock. Time for Raquel to rock. Good morning, everybody. Got the hair scarf on. Let me go put my hair scarf on real quick so we can get on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. Yeah. So what's up? What's your what's your greatest asset? Talk talk to us about your biggest asset. Well, I, I wrote um a positive um outlook. I just think it's I think I have the ability to to just reset. Um people always say stuff like game recognizes game. So when people do negative stuff I always end up getting like punked because I don't recognize game like I don't I don't know how to do I'm not an evil doer like I'm not you know going around figuring out how to do the wrong thing I spend my energy doing you know always trying to do um the right thing of course I have a story about it um and then something else popped into my head I gotta write this stuff down but um I don't know if the story is is appropriate for now so I'll hold on to it <laughs> all right fantastic so so this could this this positive outlook this this never-ending belief that um that good things are supposed to happen that 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 um that the energy go ahead like what Anne frank said you know when they always quote Anne frank when she says i believe that everybody is good in, in heart i mean and she wrote this while she was upstairs in an attic and she was you know people were trying to, to destroy her her race. So I kind of believe that everyone is is good natured, you know, and some people just just forget like, you know, I think everyone's inner light is always inside of them. They just forget, you know, they just get overwhelmed with, with society. That's why it's good to block out the television. It's good to block out um, just any just this whole thing, just dealing with ne negative noise. And then just to be able to capture it. So I'm going to tell my story real quick. It's, it's just, uh, hopefully it applies. I went to work yesterday, and does anyone don't know, one of my my part-time job is I'm a hostess at a restaurant. I have to seat people, and sometimes you have to seat them according to availability in the store, in the restaurant, as opposed to trying to do the rotation so that all the waitresses can get served at the same time. I'm learning all this stuff. I don't know why God is putting this skill set to me, but I think I'm going to need it in the future. So this girl, she got sat like a couple of times. But she was like in a lazy mood. She came to work stressed out. So she is like side eyeing me like the whole time. So she wasting her energy at the job. Look, me mugging me. And I'm just walking around happy. I'm cleaning tables like little. I, you know, I don't like I'm like a maid. <laughs> um, and I never thought I would be, be doing something like that. So I'm cleaning tables and she is wasting her energy. Like, you know, looking at me like the whole time. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like. You're there mad, and I'm here. I don't, I don't know what's going on in your head. And she's, I hear her in the kitchen. She's dropping f bombs. She's calling me she, and I'm just like, I don't know what I did. I just, and then, but you make more money when you have more people at your tables. One day they complain about not getting enough people at their tables. The next day they they complain about, um, Too you know, being set. It's like, well, why are you here? Like you don't own this business. You don't have. You're not an entrepreneur. You don't own your company. When you clock in, this has nothing to do with you. Get your go over there and wait the table. <laughs> but I just, I, don't, I just couldn't understand how she allowed this one thing to just mess up her like entire. Like, who am I? I don't even know you. I just started working there. I don't know you. Like, it just yeah. messed up her. And it's pretty girl, but she became super ugly like the and, whole day. <laughs> like, and that's that's the interesting thing, man. Because because again, we live in a negative world, right? So any one negative thing can have people focus on that negative things for so long and so often 
that they overlook all of the positive things that could be going on. So obviously, I would hope that she's there to make money, but she let this one thing that she considered to be negative, her perspective on it to be negative, bad for her, bad business for her, ruin the next hour, two hours, three hours of her day. And that's three hours of productivity that she just let slip away from her very own pockets. It's the craziest thing how we will let our emotions take control of us. So it goes back to what Pat was saying. He said, he said, basically, you want to, what did you say? Run your, what did you say? I wrote it down. <laughs> Don't let your situation run you, but you run the situation. So it could have been easy for her, right, to come over and ask you a couple questions, clear the air so she can get back to making some money. I'm pretty sure she came there to get some tips. She came there to get some money. She came there so she can pay her rent. I mean, rent is due in like six days. And you right, can't right. wasting six hours of your time. <laughs> Pat, you got anything to add? Well, it, it is amazing that we, we had to be careful of all the negativity around us. We have no idea what was in her head. Um, so uh, my advice for the day is don't get frustrated. Be fascinated how people think. Man, that, yeah. Hey, so Raquel, that was what you supposed to say, man. You are so, you are very, th this girl is fascinating. This is very, this is a fascinating moment that we're having right here. Let me reflect on this fascinating time that we're having here at the job while I'm sitting here hosting people, helping people come in. This girl, it's, it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> this is fascinating. <laughs> hey, so here's the deal, guys. That's the word of the day. Don't be frustrated. Just be fascinated by people. Just be fascinated by how they respond, how they react, how they talk how they think, how they start throwing F-bombs, how they start throwing stuff, how they start creating mess in their very own life. Just be fascinated. Just, huh? just be fascinated. fascinated. All day. <laughs> Great. Great. I'm fascinated all day. <laughs> People will fascinate you and be fascinated all day. all day. Now, here's the thing, guys. How do you be fascinated all day? It's called the law of reflection. You take that moment to reflect and you just... Man, this is fascinating. <laughs> All right, Miss Raquel, were you fascinated yesterday? Yes, I was fascinated. And now what I'm thinking um, is to replace frustrated with fascinated. Yes. So, yeah, whenever you're fascinated, just, I mean, whenever you're frustrated, just, you know, don't say, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated. Say, oh, I'm fascinated by whatever it is. You know, like I spill the coffee. Oh, I'm fascinated. Let's see how quickly I can clean it up. <laughs> Don't be frustrated. Replace your frustration with fascination. That's your word of the day. That is your phrase of the day. And Pat just keep coming up with them. We had expect the extra on Sunday. Now we got replace frustration with fascination. Miss Raquel, you got any last words for the peeps? Um, oh, it's seven thirty-five. Yeah, we gotta go. Oh, I, well, I realized yesterday that when I wave to you guys, when it comes, when it's re-recorded, it's reversed. Yeah. So if you're above me, I can wave, and if I want to look at Patrick, I have to go this way on the yeah. recording and this way live. Yeah. So I just I recognize <laughs> I recognize that. So I think I'm just gonna do like a double wave when I'm whenever you guys allow me on this on, in the seat and um, I sign off. I'm gonna wave, you know, this way and this way. <laughs> so I, I can say my good mornings, but um, Britt, I I sent you a, a Twitter um, friend request yesterday. If you if you get one from six o'clock, follow me back. Fantastic. Okay. Any last words for the peeps. See you tomorrow. Hey, See so you tomorrow. live, laugh, and love, guys. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., the Wealthy, Healthy, Happy Show. Thanks so much for joining today. Don't be frustrated. Be fascinated. Be here tomorrow. We're wealthy. We're healthy. We're happy. And we're out. <laughs>